is doing conservation is not for our, ourselves, it's for the next generation. This project is very important for, for me to contributing to the Maguey Archipelago. This is the first Asian Geographic expedition to the Maguey Archipelago in Myanmar. It's uh, a place that is legendary amongst scuba divers. Years ago, I have been here. The first time was like with my competition, Miss World Myanmar competition, with other contestants. I've never experienced like adventurous kind of thing. <laughs> mm. I hope that this project can help in this area to be a biosphere reserve. If we don't do this, in, in Myanmar there is nowhere, nowhere else to do diving. Well, I, I think it's very important for the country that they can be, they can be called ocean as a home here. So what's the plan of action for the day? Find fish. Yeah. Invited me, so I joined the Discover Scuba Diving. Uh, it was like an uh, opportunity for me to discover into the scuba scuba life. <laughs> <laughs> I was too excited and yeah, nervous about my open water scuba diving. How's the pressure? You go like lower, na kai, na kai. Don't worry, don't worry. 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 After like two time open water training and I feel comfortable right now. Definitely a huge difference from the Caribbean from what my experience, but way more soft coral here. Um, and just in general, I feel like there's just more fish 
It, you don't have to just focus off the one good coral head per dive. There's just there's coral heads everywhere. It's totally different out here. Never seen anything like it. My full name is uh, Yam Pai Ton, but uh, they call me the Ko Pai. I'm a dive master of the uh, Nyangpi Resort because my hometown is uh, <laughs> in the southern part of Myanmar, including in the Margaret Ikapi Archipelago. So in this area, uh, some of the great reef sharks and nut sharks are coming back. So we hopefully uh, this site also they are coming back. I really appreciate my team. We come all the way here to, to filming this, just to showcase the, the beauty part of it below. My name's Kay, Kay Burn Lim. I uh, film underwater for a living, underwater cameraman. Been doing it for quite a few years. My name is Diego Garcia, I'm the director and underwater cameraman on this uh, Merguay expedition. All right, where are we? I'm a camera assistant here with Asian Geographic. Um, I'm also a scuba diver. I've been a diver for about 10 years, but um, this is really amazing diving that I've never seen before. I also found a turtle. That was awesome. Diego was like, find me a turtle. And in the next dive, I literally found the turtle. All kinds of cool stuff on this, on this trip. Promising still. Six, seven years in the cave, there was another tunnel. 
There was a small cave there. Most of the times that we saw the sleeping and not sharks in there. Uh, about three years ago, I think, sir, I see that not much left. diving for over a week now and what's been happening every site every dive site we get to there's one or two fishing boats that are there ahead of time when we get in the water we're seeing two three four of these huge fishing traps and the effect is really that we're not seeing larger fish about 10 years ago this place is uh, famous for shark feeding but then later, for five years, there was no many shark left. So I worry, <laughs> I worry. One thing that we haven't seen at all are sharks, whether that's the predatory sharks or like filter feeding whale sharks, and we also haven't seen mantas. When I was young, the small fishing boats uh, they can get uh, within a week full of the fish and they can go back. But now they have to spend a couple of weeks, ice are melting, these days are running out, there was no fish and that because of the big fishing boats are uh, fishing around this area so the small boats are uh, nothing's got so they start to thinking how they can get uh, more fish okay. diving then 15 years ago i can say that 65 percent of the marine life uh, gone gone
we cannot live it next 10 years. This will be like what you say, 15 yeah. years, 65% gone. Oh, next 10 okay. years, another 50% gone. It's, it's like, nothing left. We, it's nothing left. So these are the ghost nuts that cover the entire reef. They're all over the sea fans, corals, you know. Turtles get caught in them, they get killed. Fish get caught in them, they get killed. It's just a mountain of them down there. So this is what we have to do, you know. We have to try step by step, clean these things up. I've never been on a dive where there were squid, so um, I found that particularly interesting. I think what we saw was big fin reef squid, and they are iridescent, they have large eyes, they were up in the shallow waters, and I watched them for a little bit longer. They were mating, they had um, egg sacs or sperm sacs, something like that. And they, they would go off into the blue, they'd splay out their tentacles, they'd you know, move their fins, and they, they would turn red sometimes, which I think was part of their uh, behavior, maybe it was part of their mating. They would shield one as she went in and deposited something. It was very interesting, it was very intricate. Squids are intelligent creatures, very intelligent mollusks, and that was so cool to see. Probably one of my favorite unexpected animals to see. My name is Wynn, and I'm currently working at Victoria Cliff Resort on Yao Pi Island. I was born and raised in Anam, around Andaman Sea, so like I see the issues that uh, there are decrease in number of corals because of destruction. Started a coral farming plan to help the corals to grow again. Using the blue lights, it increased the growth of the coral five times faster than the ocean. But here I provide them space so like it could cover like the whole sands and maybe corals like some cut, some area that are dead. Looking forward to join the Asian Geographic Expeditions and see like how the Burma Bank is doing. So nearest island is about 50 miles away, and around the bank there's a deep sea. Why not many fishing boats here? Too, too, too far. Too far. Too far for the too far for, for the fishermen from Burma. Yeah. I'm just trying to put a mat underneath to make sure it doesn't slip. This is just my first draft. It's a rough draft. It's a work in progress. Luckily, I got some help here. Effectively, they're going to be weighted and baited cameras. We'll find a place to put the bait, and, and we, I will I'll set up the cameras. Okay? We're going to leave the cameras running. We'll come up, uh, and we'll do a service interval. We hope there's more fish here because. Uh, Almost nobody has been here for like four to six years. So it's going to be interesting to see are the corals bombed out, um, if, this, if the fish life has come back, or if the fishermen are still coming back here. There are no fishing boats. She ain't ready for the eighth.
He be riding on the wave. I ain't got a lot to say. Mine's heavy, give me space. Time's ready, let me blaze. Spend money, what a waste. Time's money, money pays. You ain't ready for the eighth. She ain't ready for the eighth. Mad as savage, me back and I'm back in it, having it ready to blow. I remember doing deeds with Deji from the street, they left me on my own. Monkey asking me about how I got the P, I told her leaving mama grown. Then they're ringing off my phone. Then they're ringing off my phone. When divers come through, fish, predators, and even some sharks evacuate that area. If that's what's happening, these little cameras will actually capture what happens after we leave. So the hope is that there are some sharks there and that we'll, we'll catch them on, on video. Deployment went good. Let's see. Okay, up in the surface interval, we'll go back down and retrieve it. You knew that Burma Banks had recovered somewhat. If she ain't ready for the eighth, he be riding on the wave. I ain't got a lot to say. Mine's heavy, give me space. Pine's ready, let me blaze. Spend money, what a waste. Time's money, money pays. You ain't ready for the eighth. She ain't ready for the eighth. I will dive again, again, and again <laughs> because like this is so beautiful and this is the place I definitely need to experience. It's my first time diving in open water and Maggie Archipelago. It's just like the uh, best experience ever for me. For me, I, I, I want to learn two things. Is that One is we have to think about for the fishermen how we can have a solution for them. We cannot just ban, this, ban fishing to how we can sustain ocean and how we can sustain the Maguey Acapalagos. First time, we were sleeping in the ocean. Yeah, so like, here in Bomber hey, Bank. So, yeah, Bomber <laughs> Bank. So like, enjoying it tonight. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>sharks for the first time on this trip and then this one like about two to three meters sleeping under the cave wow
the shock finally. I didn't expect that. It's great news. Yeah. <laughs> well, finally, we got that. Uh, you know, it shows that if you leave it alone, they come back. Yeah. You know, I've got hope. Hope that our next time we're gonna see a different species. Like being so much under intense fishing pressure, but now, yeah. No sharks, like seven or eight. A lot of nurse sharks, some are like come one after another, another, you know, like it's amazing. There's a whale, there's a whale. Whale, whale, whale. Half the size of the boat. Very gentle moving, but for us, <laughs> hard to breathe. Yeah, it was my first time seeing a whale. It's like so amazing. But it's like with one swap of a tail, it can go faster than where I, I can't follow it, man. Like I got a good shot of it. It's amazing, amazing, amazing experience. To see a whale underwater, a Buddhist whale, I mean, any whale, is, especially when you're scuba diving, it's just unheard of. I can't believe I didn't see it. <laughs> got the shot it was and it was a great shot as well it's amazing 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 experience well. but this was a hallelujah moment <laughs> yeah. we really need to do something it's now or never and ocean is so important for everyone and especially for the locals it's obviously coming back. I'm, I'm hopeful for the place so if they can continue to protect it and leave it alone like this. You know, the combination of ecotourism, scuba diving, and have these no-take zones that in fact protect the populations of fish that the people rely on for food as well. If we not uh, take care of this area, next 10 years, for my boys, uh, nothing to show. Everyone's like wanting seafood and even the poor fishermen need to feed their family. But I still hope that our Maggie Archipelago can be protected. It deserves to be a biosphere reserve. <laughs>